and welcome young and all to the first match of the 10th Alliance Tournament. I am Ravy, one of your two commentators for today. And I am Zastro, the other commentator. Hello, my friends. How are you doing today, Zastro? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm, we've been hardly right. trying to get all these things the, set up, so ready to go. The match has now begun, so we'll skip the pleasantries. We have uh, Agony versus the Exiled Ones. Agony has brought two Rattlesnakes, three Merlins, and a Hawk. And um, the Exiled Ones team is three Tangus and a Merlin. Lots of Merlins. A lot of Merlins. Uh, did you expect to see so many Tengus in the 6v6? Um, they were popular last year. I'm not surprised they're popular this year. What's interesting is that these Tengus are fit, uh, likely with Micro Warp Drive. They don't have the Afterburner subsystem fit, so they're going to be uh, trying to keep out of range as much as possible. If they do get scrammed, they're going to be in trouble, and those Merlins can do a great job of catching and scramming things while surviving. I have a special place in my heart for Merlins. That was my first ship in EVE Online ever as a tackling it, newbie. And it is a great, great ship now. I expect we are going to see a lot of Merlins over the course of this tournament. Right now, one of the Merlins, Silas uh, Sanazi of uh, Agni, is under fire from the combined uh, Tangus. And one of the Tangus, uh, Sulio, is uh, under fire for Exiled. Yeah, do you think it's a smart idea to go after the Merlins first? Yes, definitely. These Tangus need to be able to kite to survive, so taking down the tacklers has got to be the first priority. It seems like the teams are pretty spread out across the uh, battlefield. Um, the Merlins are going after the Tangus, trying to get those tackles on, and they are mostly webbed right now. Yeah, I'm expecting that we're going to be seeing buffer fits from this t those Tangus, considering I think they're running the adaptive shield in, and we're probably going to be seeing those new ancillary shield boosters from the uh, Rattlesnakes. So they will be very, yeah. very tough nuts to crack. There's our first kill of the match, Agony Empire losing their only tackler, their one Merlin. Mm -hmm. And uh, having that down is going to free up the Merlins. And now we have a Merlin down for uh, uh, Exiled ones as well. Sorry, I got the, had the two teams confused at the beginning there. No, wait. It's, it's the sides are messed up on the actual uh, screen. Um, it is Agony in the Rattlesnakes, and it is Exiled ones in the Tengus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll try to keep that straight in my head while I'm watching this. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We've got a bit of a new system here, although I think you'll all agree watching this is it looks very pretty and it gives you some great information on the bottom. If Just to introduce people to the system we've got, uh, at the bottom beside each name of the ship, you can see what uh, E-War effects are applied to it. So you can see that the Tengu of Sulio for um, its exiled ones has both a web and a scram on him, which means that he's not going to be micro warp driving and getting out of there. Yeah, this is the first match we've had with the uh, new systems for Alliance Tournament 10. Uh, I gotta say, I'm a big fan of the new scoreboard down at the bottom. There's a whole lot more information. It's a lot easier to figure out what's going on. That first Tengu for Exiled Ones is gonna be going down soon. He's leaving shields any time now, and he's likely gonna go down very quickly after that. It actually does look like he is active tanked. I'm seeing a shield booster effect from him, but uh, it's not enough, and here he goes into armor. Do you think that new module, the, uh, the new shield booster, is going to be a major part of the fitting in this Alliance tournament? Yes, I definitely do. It's extremely powerful, and uh, it's one of those things that can be used both on its own with cap transfers in concert with other reps. It's uh, a great uh, module, especially for the six mans. We've also seen another uh, Merlin for Agony go down, too. So Agony is now down to only one Tackler, the Hawk, and uh, Exiled One's is down to two Tangus, with one of them going down very quickly now. Yeah, the two Rattlesnakes and the Hawk versus the two Tangus. Uh, I personally prefer the Rattlesnakes and the Hawk in this matchup. Yeah, at this point, although what would be interesting is if the um, Tangus can take down that last Hawk, they may be able to uh, just kite outside of the range of the Rattlesnakes, but I don't think they'll be able to take down a Rattlesnake either, so you might well, just the, see the match go to points. The Hawk doesn't have any tackle on him right now, so he doesn't have that much. Well, there he goes. He just got the tackle on. Mm -hmm. That Tangu's going down. Very fast. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very clear win for Agony. This is quite a strong team. We've seen the two Rattlesnakes cap transferring each other. It's likely that they're going to be using the new ancillary shield boosters with those cap transfers to run them forever. The best way to break something like that is to have some ECM on your team. If you don't, and if you don't have ridiculously strong DPS, you're not going to be able to break through that tank, and those can just tank forever. Yeah, speaking of ECM, another. Uh, I'm so glad that they put ECM graphics in uh, mm -hmm. now so we can see what's going on when people are getting jammed. Yeah, and having them down at the bottom of the screen there means we can see exactly who's getting what that you were applied, and this last Tangu for Exiled Ones is going down, and it's going to be a very clear win for Agony. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to describe these teams. Agony is uh, an alliance that's been doing PvP for a very long time based out of Syndicate. They're most well known for their uh, PvP training that they do, but uh, they're 
quite good characters on their own. Every time I've run into them, I've always really respected what they've been able to bring. Exiled ones I'm not nearly familiar with. Do you know much about Zestra? Uh, I They're a wormhole team, uh, is all I've been able to discover. Uh, well, I don't ever go to wormholes, so I never really see them. They did bring uh, what is likely going to be a pretty common setup and what can be quite a strong setup. I think it probably could have been stronger if they'd used 100 MN afterburners instead of the micro warp drives, but uh, it's not enough to take down Agony. This uh, double Rattlesnake team, two Rattlesnakes and a six-man, bringing enough DPS in a six-man to break two Rattlesnakes that are cap transferring is going to be very difficult. You're really going to need something exceptionally high DPS to get a beat that. Yeah, do you think we're going to see a whole lot of faction ships like Rattlesnakes through the uh, rest of the prelims? I think we will see some of them. Um, you can't use the flagships in the six-man, but I think we're going to see some of those flagships get used in the 12-man uh, matches, and I think we're also going to see the fact that they've dropped one point um, be something that really helps them out. Yeah, it, one point here and there can make a big difference in um, fitting a team for the point limits. And there goes the Tengu of... Uh, Janikra uh, from Exiled Ones, and that is the last ship. Agony Empire has won with a very convincing victory, winning 62 points. Exiled One has only picked up six points from the uh, two frigates. Means Exiled One's gonna have a very, very difficult time moving forward, um, but Agony is in great shape for the next weekend. And good yeah, fights in local from everyone. GFs, GFs all, high fives all around. So we'll be moving to the next match as quickly as possible. Sorry about the technical delays that got uh, started a bit late, but we're going to try to make it up by uh, moving through the matches as fast as possible. Stay on the stream, keep watching, and uh, we will keep showing you the best PvP available on TV.